Well, 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 well. Brown Hornet, what's good? What's good, brother? You know. What's good, my brother? You know. We here back with some content this morning. I've been meaning to hop on this one for a minute, man, but I wanted to do it at the right time. But hey, guess we'll do it right now. Six Mississippi officers called Goon Squad tortured two black men, right? Now, I've been telling you guys, man, that racism is going on all across all across the country. A lot of you guys are just so focused on California that you're not even paying attention to your own backyard. Let me repeat that. A lot of people are so focused on California to the point to where they're not even paying attention to the racism that's going on in their own backyards. I did a story last year about a black man in Mississippi who was kidnapped and tortured by a couple of white supremacists. And these guys wasn't police officers. These were just regular racist white guys in the backwoods of Mississippi who tortured a black man while he was on his way to work. I covered that story, man, and I can't remember the name of it, but I did it. And so, like I said, homie, a lot of you guys are not paying attention to the racism in your own backyard. Too busy paying attention to California. What's going on over here? I've, I've called that out a long time ago. I spoke on the Dollar General shooting in Florida. White guy shoots up the Dollar General in Florida. I said, what are Florida niggas doing about that? I had and it's no and listen, I have no problem with Florida. I love Florida, but my point is this. I'm like, you have people in the comment section from Florida saying, Well, what are you guys doing about racism in Cali? I said, Well, white guy shoots up Dollar General in Florida. What did you guys do about that? You got racism in your own backyard, racially motivated attacks. Right? The only thing is California is a big place where they highlight everything, it's all over the media. But don't for one second think that it ain't, don't for one second think that it's not going on in your own backyard. Because it really is. Rather live in Africa than Mississippi. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think nobody want to live in no Mississippi. <laughs> I don't think nobody want to live in Mississippi, man. <laughs> that's That's a fact. Like, uh, you know, you think about the deep south, Alabama, Mississippi, a lot of bad memories, man. It's just like you really don't want nothing to do with it, man. Just based on the history of these places. Right. I get it. Perception is everything, man. Perception becomes reality, even when it's a fantasy. Can you understand me? But anyway, man, you guys get the picture. Hit the like button and support the show. This is what I'm going to do. I got two shows coming up. I got another show we're going to redo. The show that we did yesterday about the Venezuelan gangs, because it was a lot of stuff said in there that a lot of you guys don't deserve it, man. A lot of my real supporters, my natural supporters, you don't need to hear those rants, me talking about this and that. We're going to keep it about the content. So we're going to we're going to talk about Haiti and the villains. Excuse me. We're going to talk about Haiti and Venezuelan gangs on my second podcast today. So be prepared for that. You know. Be prepared for that. Uh, I think I'll give it to you guys like around maybe like two. I don't know. Hmm. But I appreciate my people for tapping in with us. It's a beautiful day like always, man. Spring is here, man. So what are you going to do for spring? You know what I mean? Show some love with it, man. Shout out to Desmond Hill for tapping in. XL Pro. I know you enjoyed the stream yesterday, man, but I got to redo it, man. I want to make that one with no curse words. I want to make it clean with no curse words, man, because YouTube sent me an email about, you know, uh, vulgar language and stuff like that. So I said, you know what? To avoid problems, let me take that down and we'll just redo it and make it 10 times better without the profanity, without ranting about what's going on with these YouTube politics. We're going to leave that stuff out of it and we're going to give you guys a good show. We're going to give you guys a, a, a great show. You know what I mean? Not only this one, but we're going to give you another one. So, yes, you're tuned in to one of the best in the game. Red Supreme. 
Oh, man, where my people at, man? Hit the like button, man. Now, sometimes it is frustrating. Let me be real with you guys, man. It is frustrating, man, when you talk about stuff that's important and you see goofies who just talk about female nature every day. And you know they ain't even got a woman. They don't. A lot of these guys don't even have a woman. And they have these female nature conversations every day. And I say to myself, you got to be a you got to be a goofy to tune into that every day. And sometimes we get carried away talking about that. But you understand my point. You know, I'm just trying to get black people to focus on what's important, you know, because some of those conversations ain't nothing but distractions. That's all they are. I did a short video. Hit the hit the like button, man. I made a short video this morning about how a lot of people claim they got issues with no jumper but that's all they do is make reactionary videos to no jumper every day they have no content outside of that i'll repeat look at these guys who claim they got a problem with no jumper in the adam 22 podcast but when you look at their channel that's all they talk about adam said this brick baby said that millions of reactionary videos about the no jumper podcast the same podcast that you claim to hate. But it goes back to what I said. A lot of niggas have no talent. So what they do is they sit around and just make millions of reactionary videos to No Jumper. And it requires no talent to do that. None at all. But anyway, we're going to move past that. We're going to talk about what's important. We will do it over here. Shout out to Trap Rebel, Brown Hornet, Uncle Diggity, Costa Nostra, everybody that's happening in with Preen. We serving up beautiful game. I'm tired of these niggas making millions of videos about Brick Baby and No Jumper. None of them niggas have talent. Because if you had talent, you wouldn't sit around talking about Adam 22 and Brick Baby all day. You would have other things to talk about. But when you have no talent, you have nothing to talk about. Well, let me just talk about Adam 22 all day and what they're doing. Listen, homie, you niggas might as well work for No Jumper. Why don't you just go work for Adam 22? Because all you do is talk about him all day. These niggas can't go one day without making a reaction every video to the No Jumper podcast. Tell me I'm lying. Them niggas can't even go one day without making a video about No Jumper. But these are the same guys who claim to hate No Jumper. But you wake up every day with No Jumper on your mind. Millions of reaction every videos. No talent having niggas. Anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about what's going on in Mississippi. We ain't going to get sidetracked now. We ain't going to get sidetracked. That's all them niggas do is talk about Adam 22 and no jumper. I don't see how y'all watch them goofy ass niggas. I don't see how y'all watch them goofy ass niggas who gossip about Adam 22 all day. I can't see how y'all watch that shit. If I want to hear about no jumper, I'll watch no jumper. I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to watch you make millions of reactionary videos to it for what? Mississippi Sheriff's deputies are behind bars after being sentenced for taking part in the racially motivated torture of two black Mississippi Sheriff's deputies are behind. Well, tonight, two former Mississippi Sheriff's deputies are behind bars after being sentenced for taking part in the racially motivated torture of two black men last year. The deputies were among a group of white law enforcement officers who called themselves the goon squad because of their willingness to use excessive force. CBS's Errol Burnett reports. Egregious and despicable. Those words from a federal judge in Mississippi describing the actions of former cops Hunter Elwood, sentenced to 20 years, and Jeffrey Middleton, sentenced to more than 17 years. They, along with four others, some of whom refer to themselves as the Goon Squad, pleaded guilty to breaking into this home early last year without a warrant, then terrorizing and torturing two black men all apparently because they stayed at this house with a white woman. The six white police officers involved in this assault sought to dehumanize their victims. During the ordeal, both were handcuffed as deputies poured milk, alcohol and syrup on their faces, calling them racial slurs. At one point, Michael Jenkins was shot in the mouth. You're looking at me, I'm looking at him. You sat there for a minute. You pull the trigger. You see the bullet, you know, coming out of the gun. I mean, the fire coming out, and it just, I mean, it was, it was horrific. The federal charges were brought by the Department of Justice's. Now, you can tell these white boys, um, 
they're the um they're the sons of the Ku Klux Klansmen. If you studied history and looked at their ancestors where their daddies were Klansmen, that's a, that's a white supremacist mentality. So you know they had Klansmen in their family. They're they're from Mississippi, so why would you be surprised? You know how like blacks we got gangbangers in our family street niggas? Well, white people got white supremacists in their families. They granddaddies was a part of the clan back in the day. How do I know? Well, look at their actions. Those are the actions of Klansmen. They're in Mississippi. Why would you be surprised? I don't know why you people think that racism has died. When you see these police officers and judges, they are the, they are the children, the grandchildren of the Ku Klux Klansmen. They are the grandchildren of white supremacists. Please believe it. In the mouth. During the ordeal, both were handcuffed as deputies poured milk, alcohol, and syrup on their faces, calling them racial slurs. At one point, Michael Jenkins was shot in the mouth. Look at me, I'm looking at him. You sat there for a minute. You pull the trigger. You can see the bullet, you know, coming out of the gun. I mean, the fire coming out, and it just, I mean, it was, it was horrific. The federal charges were brought by the Department of Justice's Civil Rights Division. Hard to imagine a more atrocious set of civil rights violations than those carried out by these guys. An investigation by the Associated Press revealed that since 2019, some of these deputies had been involved in at least four violent assaults on black men. They resulted in two deaths and another suffering lasting injuries. They're not just depriving victims of their civil rights, they're degrading the public's trust now look at this what's going on look at you black men with all these look at you black men with these big platforms but look at what these niggas use their platforms for look at these black men with 100,000 subscribers 200,000 subscribers and you look at what they're using their platforms for to talk about dumb shit i mean some of that stuff is cool because i don't mind talking about relationships and what goes on because i i love putting y'all up on game but we're not going to spend every day, all day talking about what females are doing, homie. If you got a platform with, with, with 100,000 subscribers or better, 50,000, 40,000, 20,000, and all you do is talk about what's going on with females, you a disgrace to the black community, homie. You're not using your channel for anything real. You're using your channel to gossip about women for cash apps from beta males and simps. Why would a black man with a large platform ignore shit like this and just talk about women every day? That's something y'all need to ask yourselves because I already have the answer to it. I know why these niggas do it. I, listen, homie, I, I, listen, I can't take you serious and nobody would come and send shit either. Why would you listen to a nigga with a large platform and he won't use his platform to talk about nothing real? He won't use his platform to inform the people about what's really going on. Nah, we just going to talk about what's going on with women every day while ignoring shit like this. Shame on y'all for supporting them niggas, man. That's all I'm going to say. Shame on y'all. Imagine a more atrocious set of civil rights violations than those carried out by these guys. An investigation by the Associated Press revealed that since 2019, some of these deputies had been involved in at least four violent assaults on black men. They resulted in two deaths and another suffering lasting injuries. They're not just depriving victims of their civil rights, they're degrading the public's trust in our criminal <laughs> justice system. <laughs> Now, there are still four additional deputies to be sentenced later this week. And during today's hearing in the federal courthouse you see behind me, Hunter Elwood addressed the court, said he accepted responsibility and said to the two victims, Nora, that he apologized. At that point, one of the victims, Eddie Parker, stood, turned to him and said, I forgive you. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Carol Burnett, thank you. Turning now to a very troubling story out of Mississippi involving six law enforcement officers convicted in a brutal racist assault. They called themselves the Goon Squad, and two of them were sentenced yesterday. The attack began when someone called to complain about two black men staying with a white woman. Errol Barnett has been following this case, and we want to warn you that some of the details are very disturbing. We want it, Jeff.
Now to a very troubling story out of Mississippi involving six law enforcement officers convicted in a brutal racist. So all you black men with large platforms, let me say this again. My, my, my mic got mute. My mic was on mute. Hit the like button. I need everybody to hit the like button. For all you black men with large platforms that avoid having conversations about stuff like this, you guys are cowards. You're misusing your platform. And all you're doing is entertaining celebrity gossip and, and, and bullshit pertaining to females all day you got black men brothers with platforms with over 100,000 subscribers and they won't even talk about stuff like this this could have happened to your brother this could have happened to your father your your your, your cousin your grandson or whatever it may be this could have happened to you so what are you going to do ignore stories like this and just talk about females all day and celebrity gossip you niggas are cowards your platform is, 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 is a major disservice to the black community because all you're using it for is let's talk about females and celebrity gossip. But at the same time, you ignore shit like this that's happening to our people. You niggas are cowards. And Red Supreme said it. Hit the like button and support the show. Turning now to a very troubling story out of Mississippi involving six law enforcement officers convicted in a brutal racist assault. They called themselves the Goon Squad and two of them were sentenced yesterday. The attack began when someone called to complain about two black men staying with a white woman. Errol Barnett has been following this case, and we want to warn you that some of the details are very disturbing. We wanted justice and we have some justice. Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker say they are satisfied. See, the problem I have with these niggas, they gonna wait until something like this happens to their family member. Now they're gonna want everybody to take it serious when it happens to them. But to all you niggas with these big platforms and all you want to talk about is celebrity gossip and stuff pertaining to women, you dudes are cowards. And why do I say that? Because you're misusing your platform. You're not talking about anything real. You're not using your platform to inform your people about anything real. You're just talking about females and celebrity bullshit all day. While ignoring shit like this that's really happening across the country. Let me tell you something, man. If you guys are still entertained by that, you fall in the same boat as them niggas, man. I'm going to call it for what it is. If you're, if you're still entertained by niggas who gossip about females and celebrity shit all day, if you're entertained by that, something is wrong with you too. After a federal judge sentenced former sheriff deputies Hunter Elwood to 20 years and Jeffrey Middleton to 17 years. A very troubling story out of Mississippi involving six law enforcement officers convicted in a brutal racist assault. They called themselves the Goon Squad, and two of them were sentenced yesterday. The attack began when someone called to complain about two black men staying with a white woman. Errol Barnett has been following this case, and we want to warn you that some of the details are very mm. disturbing. <laughs> We wanted justice and we have some justice. <laughs> Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker say they are satisfied after a federal judge sentenced former sheriff deputies Hunter Elwood to 20 years and Jeffrey Middleton to 17 years for crimes the judge called egregious and despicable. For Everybody with common sense knows that California people come from the South. That's no secret. You ain't... You ain't got to do your homework for that. Everybody knows that. That's common sense. Two plus two is four. Right. Black people from California mainly come from the South. That's common sense. As far as the, the torture session, <laughs> it went down, you know, mainly in here. <laughs> A so-called goon squad of six officers pleaded guilty to crimes, including entering this home last year without a search warrant. There, they shot Jenkins and Parker with stun guns, sexually assaulted them, and poured alcohol and milk over them while shouting racial slurs. The six white police officers involved in this assault sought to dehumanize their victims. Elwood admitted to shooting <laughs> Jenkins after putting a gun in his mouth during a mock execution. Looking at me, I'm looking at him. And sat there for a minute. Pull the trigger. In the courtroom Tuesday, Elwood apologized directly to the two men. Parker then forgave the ex-officer. Why would you forgive somebody? I'm sick of you slave Negroes. I'm sick of you slave plantation Negroes always forgiving the master, but won't forgive your brother, but you forgave the master. Did you forgive them niggas that killed your cousin? 
No, you didn't. You wanted to see him burn in hell. I'm sick of your slave minded nigga. Did you forget them niggas that killed your cousin in Mississippi? Hell no. Nah. You said let them niggas burn in hell. Oh, but when the massa do it, I forgive you, massa. I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to forgive massa. I just want to live in a better, safer world. I, I wish that racism, that I wish that racism never existed. Now, all of a sudden, you didn't caught the Holy Ghost and you give forgiveness and you, eh, 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 and you have no problem when it comes to forgiving white folks. Oh, but when it comes to them niggas, you want them to burn in hell. You have no problem forgiving the slave master, though. I forgive you, massa. Shame. What a damn shame. Shame. Execution. Look at me. I'm looking at him. Oh, God. there for a minute. Pull the trigger. In the courtroom Tuesday, oh. Elwood apologized directly to the two men. Oh. Parker then forgave the ex officer. I forgive that boy, but other than that, still, he still did, you know what I'm saying? What he uh. did, and he, got, he has to be punished for it. An investigation by the Associated Press revealed that since 2019, some of the deputies had been involved in at least four violent assaults on black men, which resulted in two deaths and another suffering lasting injuries. Let me tell you something, man. Listen, hit the like button. Do you think these white boys woke up one day and decided to be racist? Or do you think there there's a long list of victims, homie? There's a long list of victims that they're not talking about. These white boys didn't wake up one day and say, you know, we're going to just hate black people. They've been doing this shit. There's a long trail of victims if you do your homework. This is not an isolated incident. They've been doing this. Why do you think they felt so comfortable doing it? Because they've been doing it for a long time. This is not their first rodeo. Hit the like button and support the show in a major way. Hit the like button and support the show in a major way. This ain't their first rodeo, homie. Associated Press revealed that since 2019, oh. some of the deputies had been involved in at least four violent assaults on black men, which resulted in two deaths and oh. another suffering lasting injuries. What do you say to people of color in Rankin County who look at this case and wonder if they're safe? Well, I think that the people of color in Rankin County are safer uh, than they were this time last year. <laughs> Uh, now, later today and throughout the week, the other four officers involved in this racist torture incident will be sentenced. They face anywhere from five to 30 years in prison. But lawyers representing the victims say that's not enough. They've called for the ouster of Rankin County Sheriff Brian Bailey. Hold on. Let me hear that sentence again. I need to hear that again. Now, later today and throughout the week, the other four officers involved in this racist torture incident will be sentenced. They face anywhere from five to 30 years in the suffering. Hold on, five to 30 years. That's bullshit. What they're saying is five to 30. But what's going to happen is they're going to give them a slap on the wrist. They're going to get five years and they're going to serve two and a half and go home. They're not going to do serious time at all. Watch, mark my words. They are not going to do serious time at all lasting injuries what do you say to people of color in rankin county who look at this case and wonder if they're safe well i think that the people of color in rankin county are safer uh than they were this time last year now, later today and throughout the week, the other four officers involved in this racist torture incident will be sentenced. They face anywhere from five to 30 years in prison. But lawyers representing the victims say that's not enough. They've called for the ouster of Rankin County Sheriff Brian Bailey, and they filed a $400 million lawsuit against him for overseeing this team. His legal team says that lawsuit should be dismissed. Tony. Errol, thank you very much. If it was left up to me, bro, all these divestors, I, I I would round all of them up. All right. This is a big week. Now, here we go, this man. This is a week that we have been. I need to get some people on that like button, man. It's mighty funny. When I was talking about gang politics, we had 300, 400 people watching. And that was some bullshit. Gossip, hood gossip. Now, we're talking about something that's very important. We should have over 400 people in the chat right now. Because this right here is something that affects our people across the country, not just in Mississippi. So hit the like button and support the show, family. Stand up for something real once in your life. Instead of just looking for gossip on the motherfucking internet all day. Waiting on. 
for months. Uh, this sentencing was supposed to take place in November. It was supposed to take place in January. That's right. It has been continued and continued. That's and right. now the day of justice has finally come. That's right. For the Rankin County Goon Squad. It's a, a, an important day, not only in Mississippi, but this is an important day for accountability, That's right. for police brutality all throughout America. Police officers are watching this sentencing. They're watching the sentences that the Honorable Judge Lee will give out tomorrow. And they're watching to see whether law enforcement in Listen, FBA supposed to come through with this. F FBA should be in here real heavy. It's mighty funny when I was talking about that Adam 22 gang bang. It was 400 niggas in the chat waiting to hear that gossip. Oh, but when it's something real, we should have been had 400 people up in here. FBA, where y'all at, man? Do you guys tap in just to hear gossip? Or do you want us to come with solutions to tackle real problems? Stand up. Share this content. Tell a friend that's going to tell a friend. Wake the people up, because right now we're asleep. Mississippi and law enforcement in America will be held sufficiently accountable for their acts of torture and brutality. On behalf of the victims of these horrific crimes, Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, as their attorneys, we are here to say that we are here advocating and seeking and desiring the maximum sentence for all six Rankin That's County right. Goon Squad defendants. That's right. We want the maximum sentence. What do we want? Maximum That's sentence. sentence. That's what we're here for. And so the defendants, Hunter Elward, who will be sentenced tomorrow, he's the the, the deputy that shot Michael Jenkins in the mouth. He will be sentenced tomorrow along with Mr. Middleton and everyone else is coming up this week. Christian Deadman, uh, Joshua Hartfield, mm -hmm. Daniel Updike, and Brett McAlpin. These are serious federal charges that these defendants have pled guilty to. I don't know if you have them, but I have the information that they have pled guilty to. And it is uh, sad and tragic information of which serious criminal penalties and consequences should be levied tomorrow. <laughs> Hunter Elwood is facing a, a, a total for this crime of at least 70 years. And let me tell you something. These white boys just got caught. They've been doing this for a long time. They just got caught for it. You don't you don't decide to do this one day and this was just their first rodeo. No, they've been doing this shit for a long time. And guess what? There's other officers who's been doing the same thing. These people just so happen to get caught. So this is why it's so important to shed light on this. Why? Because stuff like this is still going on. And another thing is we got to make sure that these guys... We got to we got to make sure that they're hit with the maximum penalty, not no five years in coming home. I know niggas who serve more time than that for a drug charge, a nonviolent crime. I know black men who serve way more than 10 years for nonviolent crimes. You mean to tell me these white guys are going to come home in five years? No, nah, man, we got to put a stop to that, because guess what? If they come home in five, guess what? It incentivizes more white people to do harm to black people, because guess what? They're not going to do hard time. So it's worth the risk if you're not going to do hard time for harming a black person. It's actually worth the risk to a white person who's racist. Oh, well, if I want to do this to a black person, but if I get caught, it's only two years. Well, fuck it. I'll take that risk. I hate black people that much. I'll run the risk of doing two years for torturing, for torturing a black person. So like he said, police officers are looking at this. They're thinking to themselves, how much time are they going to get? And if they get two to five years, Guess what? Guess what type of message that sends to the rest of the country? A black life ain't worth nothing. You can pretty much do whatever you want to do. And it ain't nothing but a slap on the wrist and you go home. That's the message that that is the message uh, that, you know, that's the message they're sending.
when you slap them on a wrist and just send them home for torturing or murdering a black person. He's facing at least 70 years for a variety yeah. of civil rights criminal violations. He faces up to 70 years for, for his, uh, his shooting of Michael Jenkins and his criminal civil rights violations. And he also has pled guilty to a similar act against other victims in Rankin County. So tomorrow will be a great test of this justice system because it will send a sign tomorrow of what will be happening with the rest of the six defendants. Uh, uh, and the, the nation is watching, police officers are watching, the victims are watching, the families are watching, and they want justice. Yes. What do you all want? Justice. And when do you want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. And when do we want it? Now. Okay, so um, before I turn it over here, I just want to say, uh, for example, Hunter, Hunter Elward is facing up to 70 years for violating United States Code uh, criminal statutes, deprivation of rights, conspiracy against civil rights, uh, obstruction of justice, conspiracy to obstruct justice. And of course, uh, uh, his charges in the discharging of a, of a firearm and, and others in the course of committing his felony, we expect stiff sentences for Hunter Elward tomorrow. Uh, uh, I have to be honest, uh, some of these other sentences that you're hearing around the country, well, an officer got three years, he, he got two years, he, he, another officer over here got probation, one got six years, but he'll serve two years. We don't want to hear, we're not expecting to hear any of that tomorrow. We are expecting here sentences that are commensurate with the nature of the criminal activity that occurred. That's right. The nature of the criminal activity occurred. You're right. Not only, listen, not only are situations like this underreported, you got a lot of black people who don't care about it. I'm going to give you a prime example. This right here is very important that we bring people together to get people on code. Do you know if if one of these guys listen a youtuber right now will talk about cardi b's relationship with offset do you know that a thousand black people will, will, will tap in and hear that goofy shit so not only are crimes like this underreported you got black people who are more focused on celebrity gossip than stuff like this so you can't blame the white people you black people don't even care how do i know i look at the numbers and the amount of supporters that i get when i talk about real shit Versus when I talk about gossip, that tells me everything I need to know about black folks. So before you criticize white folks, black folks need to get our shit together. Because for the most part, we only care about celebrity gossip and dating bullshit. Who's dating who? Who's sleeping with who? Celebrity gossip. That's all we care about for the most part, homie. The numbers don't lie. The numbers prove it. Righteously classifies what occurred on january 24th of last year as the worst set of circumstances of police brutality that has existed in this state or the country in in memory this is the worst set of circumstances the worst set of crimes that the deputies and police officers have committed anywhere and we are advocating to the judge to send sentences to the goon squad defendants that reflect the severity of their notorious crimes. We want the sentences to match the crimes because the nation is watching, the world is watching. And uh, this information is sick. Some of this information includes which, which uh, uh, our clients are not exactly. Yeah, the information is sick, but you're going to have very few YouTubers are going to talk about this, right? You know, pay attention to what I'm saying. 
you're gonna have a lot of black people black men with influence they're not gonna cover this you know what they're gonna talk about who Nicki minaj is with what's going on in her marriage cardi b who she sleep on is cardi b a feminist that's the stupid shit that these niggas use their platforms for so you can't get mad at white people for underreporting this black people as a whole don't give a fuck themselves the numbers don't lie look at all these niggas that's talking about celebrity gossip but ignoring shit like this so at that point why are you gonna get mad at white folks if you don't care as black folks why should white people care that's common sense you ain't got no damn business asking white folks to care when niggas don't care happy to have repeated here but for the purposes of sentencing it will have to be repeated here um uh not only has hunter elward shot michael jenkins in the mouth at the end of this two-hour yeah. torture session you all know all the details i won't hash all the details of the the torture and the beatings and the waterboarding and the uh I got the tasings and the beatings and the waterboarding and the illegal entry and breaking into their homes and, and beating them. <laughs> but uh, there, for, for example, uh, in here, Hunter Elward Opdyke that's it. I'm gonna say that until black people start to show how much they care about black folks, stop asking white people to give it down when black folks don't give it down. Too many of you, too many of you black YouTubers are too worried about what's going on in Nicki Minaj's marriage, too busy worried about what's going on in Cardi B's marriage. You niggas don't give it down. So why ask white folks to care when you don't? You sound stupid. Learn to care about yourself before you ask white folks to. Count six in specific, just show you how sick this is. Count six of the criminal information that these defendants have pled guilty to includes Deputy Christian Dedman and Deputy Opdyke assaulting both Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, assaulting them in the face with a sexual device, a dildo. <laughs> that is just one of the counts that three of the defendants are charged with assaulting them with a dildo and Elward watching it. Uh, uh, you know, that in and of itself, that's years to me. That that, that in itself is 10 years. Okay, because if, if a law enforcement officer, that's right. if a law enforcement officer is out here operating with his methods of, of of law enforcement and using sexual devices and dildo a strong message yeah. must be sent to that officer and must be sent to the nation that this is what we're gonna do we're gonna go right back to his speech let's go back to the uh the details of the case right L listen well in mississippi two out of the six former we're gonna we're gonna go back to that speech man because it's a powerful speech but like i said Stop asking white folks to give a damn about black folks when you don't. Black folks got to learn to care about black folks first before you ask, before you start asking white folks to give a damn. Learn to love yourselves. Learn to love your people, fool. But you got the nerve to want white people to give a damn when niggas don't. You people are backwards. And that's why shit like this continues to happen. Too busy worried about what's going on in Nicki Minaj's marriage. You niggas is too busy worried about what's going on in Cardi B's marriage. What's wrong with black people? You niggas are pathetic. Y'all make me sick to my stomach. Worried about Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, gossip pertaining to females all day. What's wrong with you niggas? And, and to take it a step further, what's wrong with you niggas who watch that goofy shit every day? Deputies are facing sentencing today for torturing two black men last year. So far, a federal judge sentenced Hunter Elwood to 20 years in prison. Jeffrey Middleton will be sentenced this afternoon. The rest of the men will follow over the next couple of days. Now, these men pleaded guilty in August to a slate of state and federal charges. And prosecutors say that the officers nicknamed themselves the Goon Squad because of their willingness to use excessive force and not report it. NBC News correspondent Antonia Hilton joins us now. 
Antonia, I mean, frankly, these charges are disgusting. And it's something that unfortunately, some people didn't realize were even happening or forgot that this even happened. And it's not quite as rare as we think. What are the charges specifically? You know, you're right to point that out because one of the conversations happening in Mississippi right now is that for many black elders there, this feels like a relic of what they were hoping was a bygone era, something from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s in the South that shouldn't be happening today. But what happened that night in January of 2023 is that these five former deputies and one police officer entered this home, no warrant, no evidence that anything was happening there. And they proceeded to torture these men for hours using food at one point a sex toy and threatening an execution and like i said homie this ain't their first rodeo they've been doing this shit for a long time the thing is they finally got caught the thing is they finally got caught but they've been doing this shit for a long time and think about how many other officers across the state of mississippi who engage in the same thing but haven't got caught yet come on homie use common sense this is not their first rodeo hell no and that's how one of the men, Michael Jenkins, ended up being shot in the mouth by one of the officers, who is the officer who has been sentenced to 20 years. So this is heinous, doesn't even really describe how awful all of this is. And on top of all of what I just described, they then tried to plant evidence, guns, drugs on these men. And it took months for these two victims, Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, to be believed. And so, you know, there's relief that we're here now. But there's another world in which that actually wouldn't have been the case. It's well, sick. Somehow Jenkins and Parker did survive. What are they saying about these sentencings? Well, they are pushing for the maximum sentences. And, and it's not just the two of them. It's actually an entire black community in the Jackson area rising up here and saying, you really need to send a message now. And, you know, we have 20 years for one officer. That officer is facing the most serious charges because of having shot Jenkins in the mouth. But they're hoping something very similar is coming for the other five men involved in this. And now on top of all of that, the local DA is going to have to review all kinds of cases in association mm -hmm. with the goon squad. So think about this. You know, th there's the story of just these six guys, mm -hmm. but really there is a bigger process here that could take. Shout out to my man, Brown Hornet for the 20. Brown Hornet hit us with a 20. Desmond hit us with a 10. You dig? My man, Cle uh, my man, um, Clevester hit us with a five. Hit the cash app, man. Shout out to you brothers on that PayPal. Let's get some brothers and sisters on that cash app. Let's get some more brothers and sisters on that like button. Share the content. Real shit. What's wrong with black people? Too busy worried about what's going on in Cardi B's marriage to talk about something real like this. Shame on niggas, but you want white folks to care when niggas don't. What sense does that make? Take years undoing all the harm that was likely done. And how many of those victims were not believed? <laughs> right. Incredible. All right. Antonia Hilton, thank you so much for your reporting. It took them. Look, listen, homie, it took them a long time to believe this. Right. They didn't believe it because they was trying to dismiss it. You know how many black people came forward and had similar experiences, but they say, oh, this is not true. You guys are making this up. So this shows you what's going on in Jackson, Mississippi. It also shows you what's been going on for a long time, but ain't nobody been saying nothing. These white guys finally got caught, but they've been doing it for many moons. This ain't their first rodeo. Sit up there and support the show. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the. Right now, two former Mississippi law enforcement officers are being sentenced after pleading guilty to federal charges in connection with torturing two black men. In January of last year, these officers, along with four others, were charged in the racist assault. The officers, who nicknamed themselves the Goon Squad, entered a home without a warrant and assaulted the two men. One of the victims was shot in the mouth. Joining us now is NBC's Antonia Hilton. Antonia, what happened in this case? Jose, this is an unbelievably heinous case uh, and really it involves brutal crimes against these two victims, Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker. What happened is that the members of the goon squad, five former deputies and a former police officer known for their use of excessive force and sort of unusual tactics, went to this home that night and they proceeded to torture these men with no evidence of a crime having been committed, no warrant, as you mentioned. They used food. They used a sex toy. Uh, at one point, as you mentioned, one was even shot in the mouth. That was Michael Jenkins. And to this day, he still suffers and has not fully healed from this. And then after torturing the men for hours, at one point forcing them to shower to cover up evidence, they planted evidence on these men, guns and drugs. And it took months 
months for these two victims to get people to hear their story. Come on, black people have been complaining about police planting drugs on us. Uh, crimes not being reported by police officers. Crimes not being reported by race soldiers. We've been talking about this, but the sad part about it is you can't even get black people to stand behind this. Why? They're too busy worried about what's going on in Cardi B's marriage to pay attention to something like this. Weak ass niggas. And I'll take it a step further. What's wrong with you niggas who watch that shit every day? What's wrong with you black people who sit around and watch grown ass men gossip about Nicki Minaj's marriage and Cardi B's marriage and celebrity female gossip all day? What's wrong with you niggas who watch that goofy shit every day? Something is wrong with y'all at this point. Something's wrong with you niggas if you're entertained by that bullshit, especially at a time like this and to be believed and so you know while there's some relief in the community now that these men are facing serious serious federal charges and that they may be behind bars for a very long time there is concern and pain that this may be a lot deeper than this one incident not just the cases that these men were involved in but perhaps a broader culture in mississippi in the rankin county area jose and how much time are these officers former officers facing well, they're looking at decades, very likely 20 or so years here, Jose. The first person to be sentenced today is going to be the officer who shot Michael Jenkins in the mouth. And he is facing some of the most serious federal charges here. But now the local DA is going to be looking into all the cases that involve the goon squad <laughs> and potentially having to unravel all of this. Potentially other people are going to be released uh, in connection uh, to this group's activities. And so while the sentence Shout out, shout out to my brother C Mac. Shout out to C Mac for the five. Hit the like button to support the show. Let's get some more brothers on that cash app. You know what I mean? Because I did a show, listen, homie. I did a show about uh what's going on in gang culture, and we had way more supporters than this. We had way more viewers, and we had way more supporters. And I was talking about black on black bullshit that goes on in the hood, although that's important as well. But this story right here should have way more numbers and way more supporters, but it don't. And it says a lot about black folks and what y'all like to listen to. Numbers don't lie, homie. The supporters don't lie. And it, the, the amount of supporters don't lie. And the amount of numbers and live viewers that we get don't lie. It proves that black people are focused on bullshit. I did a show about Adam 22 and No Jumper was falling to some people in here listening to that. We're talking about black men being tortured by white race soldiers. And I got to tell you niggas to hit the like button and support the show. Mm-mm-mm sentenced today is going to be the officer who shot Michael Jenkins in the mouth and he is facing some of the most serious mm -hmm. federal charges here but now the local DA is going to be looking into all the cases that involve the goon squad and potentially having to unravel all of this mm -hmm. potentially other people are going to be released uh, in connection uh, to this group's activities and so while the sentencing is going to go on all this week really this is going to be a long-term story about undoing all the harm that was done here Mm -mm -mm. Antonia Hilton, thank you so very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And listen, man, shout out to you guys, man. I'm just trying to get black people to focus on what's important. Listen to this. This is when it first happened. Let's let's go back when it first happened. Now the story is catching more traction, but I'm trying to get more black people involved in this. I'm trying to get black people to care about what's really important instead of celebrity gossip. That's that's my point in saying what I'm saying, homie. The six officers involved in the January abuse case of two black men in Rankin County appeared in court today for to face state charges. 12 News' Tia McKenzie, she is live from the Rankin County Court with more on today's hearing. Tia? Tal, the courtroom was packed to maximum capacity as those six officers pleaded guilty once again, this time to state charges. Brett McAlpin. Jeffrey Middleton, Christian Deadman, Hunter Elward, Daniel Opdyke, and Joshua Hartfield each entered the Rankin County Courthouse, wrists shackled to their waist in jail suits. Prosecutors today described the heinous acts that occurred during the raid on a Braxton home. The officers received word that, a, that black men were staying with a white woman there. The officers spoke with each other in cold phrases such as work easy and no bad mug shots before raiding the home, beating and torturing Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker. Jenkins was shot in the mouth during the encounter. The six officers pleaded guilty to several federal charges earlier this month. We came back inside to observe MJ and EP covered in chocolate syrup and other liquids. Shortly after, MJ and EP were ordered to strip naked and shower off. Their handcuffs were removed. After MJ and EP showered off and changed into clean underwear and sweats, they were handcuffed again 
and brought to the side bedroom adjacent to the charge board. The officers began discussing the comparative strength of their respective tasers, and they decided to test their tasers on MJ and UP to see which one was the most powerful. Be sentenced in mid November. Live in Rankin County, Tia McKenzie, 12 News. Thank you so much, Tia. Well, Rankin County Sheriff Brian Bailey also included in his statement on today's court proceedings that, quote, the Rankin County Sheriff's Office continues to evaluate and modify its policies, procedures, and training for all Sheriff's Office employees. We have asked for assistance from outside agencies and contracted with outside firms to evaluate us, make recommendations, and conduct training. He adds there these actions are taken to prevent anything like January's tragedy from ever happening again, end quote. And one of the people attending today's hearing was one of the abuse victims himself. Eddie Parker is one of the plaintiffs in a $400 million civil suit filed against the officers. Parker and attorney Trent Walker spoke with 12 News this morning. Shout out to the FBA for coming through uh, with this heavy support, man, because we got we to gotta shed more light on this. You got to stop thinking this is not an isolated incident. This has been going on for a long time. The thing is, these white guys finally got caught. They've been doing this for many moons. And then you got to think, how many, uh, how many other officers do you have that's, that, that's engaging in this same type of behavior? Well, there's tons of them. Well, they're going to be low key now just because some of their friends got caught. But don't for one second think that this is an isolated incident. It's been going on in Mississippi. It's been going on in cities across the country. These white guys finally got caught. He offered his reactions to watching the six accused officers appear in court. The view of seeing uh, the same, the walk of shame, uh, the head down, the disgust that uh, everybody that felt you know, for them and uh, that they feel for themselves. I hope um, this is a lesson to everybody out there. Justice will be served. That's right. Thank you. My thing is this. Do we have black people that are criminals? Yes, just like every other race. But we also have white officers that abuse their privilege, that abuse their um, their police badge or whatever they, whatever law enforcement they work for. They abuse, they've been abusing their power. This has been going on. It's nothing new. But the sad part about it is, Black people won't get behind this. You got black people who won't believe you. You know how long these brothers been talking about this and nobody believed them? You got black, oh man, you niggas are just saying you're criminals. You just don't want to go to jail. So you know it's bad when you got black people who won't stand behind you when it comes to stuff like this. It's terrible. Look how long, listen, man, let me, let me tell you something. Look how long it took. Excuse me, excuse me. Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Fuck. Look. All right, we we back, man. We back. We back. We had a little glitch. We had a little minor glitch, but we back. Let's get back to the content. We got to start getting black people to care about this, man. You know, you want white people to care. Why should they? Tonight, two former Mississippi deputies sentenced to federal prison for torturing two black men last year. One sentenced for 20 years, the other for 17 and a half. Both members of a self-proclaimed six-person goon squad 
known in the area for their use of excessive force and aggressive tactics. This is a message to all racist police officers in every department in Mississippi and throughout the United States of America that beware that justice will be coming your way. According to court documents, Hunter Elward, Jeffrey Middleton, and four other officers broke into a home without a warrant. They shouted racial slurs, physically and sexually assaulted their victims, Michael Corey Jenkins and Eddie Parker, and planted fake evidence on them. All six entered guilty pleas in August. The two victims survived, but the torture that night culminated with Elward shooting Jenkins in the mouth. This guy never go away. Jenkins is still in pain, but today he feels safer with Elward off the street. Feels somewhere safe. Now, I want my people to understand this. If they're doing this with technology, just imagine what they was doing us. Imagine what they was doing to us back when there was no technology and less justice for a black man. They was feeding blacks to alligators and getting away with it, burying niggas, torturing, and nobody believed them. So if they're if they're bold enough to do this today in 2024 with all this technology, imagine what they was doing 20 years ago before this technology existed. Come on, black people, let's get this together. We got to put a stop to this nonsense. That dude could have been your brother, your uncle, your grandfather. You got to look at it just like that instead of saying, well, it ain't my family, so I don't care. That's a terrible mentality. Wake up, family. For many in Mississippi, the case is reminiscent of a frightening racist past. Today in court, Elward addressed the men directly, saying, I am so sorry for what I did. I forgive that part, but other than that, still, he still did, you know what I'm saying? Now, I'm upset with you. You forgive them for what? You forgive these racist white men for torturing black people. And like I said, they've been doing this for a long time. The thing is, they finally got caught. So why would you forgive them? They're not sorry. They're only sorry that they got caught for this stuff, man. They don't give a damn about you or your people. Why? They've been doing it for a long time. Eventually, you're going to slip up and get caught. And that's exactly what happened to these dudes. But you forgive them. Wow. You sound like a slave fresh from the plantation, bro. You sound like a slave from the Rosewood plantation. I forgive massa. I forgive massa for what he did to me and my peoples, y'all. I'm going to be the bigger person and forgive massa. You sound like you fresh from a slave plantation, bro. And it's 2024. Let's go. For many in Mississippi, the case is reminiscent of a frightening racist past. Goon squad, your day has come. Today in court, Elward addressed the men directly, saying, I am so sorry for what I did. I forgive that part, but other than that, still, he still did, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the other four officers will be sentenced later this week. Meanwhile, the local district attorney is now reviewing cases involving the goon squad. But that process can take months or even years. Antonia Hilton, NBC News, New York. Thanks for watching. Stay. He said, yeah, I forgive that. Damn, no, come on. He said, uh, I forgive that boy. I forgive that boy. That's what he said. He said he forgive him. Uh, 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 yeah, I know they done me wrongs, but I forgive them. This is what he said. I know they done me wrong. All's my life, I've been tortured by the master, but I've been praying to God on my knees, praying to Jesus. I forgive these men for what they did to me. I forgive them, Lord. I ask the Lord to forgive these men for what they did to me, y'all. You sound like a slave fresh from the Rosewood Plantation. I forgive the master for what he did to me, y'all. I'm going to pray and give it to God. What? Oh, my God, man. Come on, man. You forgive him. Lord Jesus, help him. Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. I forgive Massa for what he did to my peoples, y'all. Two black men who were the victims of a racially motivated attack by law enforcement officers will receive justice this week. Club News, Delisa Blanks is, is there to, when the uh, two men and their attorney spoke ahead of this week's sentencing.
witness right Michael Corey Jenkins and Eddie Parker were subjected to violent torture last year by five former Rankin County deputies and one Richmond police officer. This week, those six officers who called themselves the Goon Squad are set to be sentenced in federal court. <laughs> Jenkins, Parker, and their attorneys called for the federal judge to impose the strictest <laughs> possible penalties at the sentencing this week. The state has been dragged to justice. Right. Right. There's state sentencing that's coming after this, but the charges are nowhere near as heavy. And they're also concurrent, meaning that they won't add any time. So uh, uh, Lynn Fitch and the governor and the state have been dragged uh, here. And, and, I, and I fear to say what would happen if we didn't have Ms. Clark in the uh, Justice Department right. Civil Rights Division. Right. Obstruction of justice and the cover-up, according to criminal even law. civil rights criminal law, is more serious Roach. than the act. Right. Okay, right. okay. Right. okay. because right. if, you, if you lose integrity in the entire system, right. if you have a bunch of lying officers right. that are covering right. up planning evidence right. and concealing right. evidence, conspiracy to obstruct justice carries a maximum of 20 years. Okay, uh, obstruction of justice carries a maximum of 20 years. Mm. The other crimes, deprivation under color of law, snatching the rights and assaults and the other, which are serious acts, but they carry 10 years. The law enforcement officers pled guilty to multiple federal and state charges, including assault, conspiracy, and obstruction of justice. And I'm gonna read out the cash apps, man. Let me read. I'm gonna read out the cash apps, man. Give me another 10 minutes. Uh, the FBA came through with heavy support, man, in a major way. And I appreciate everybody for uh coming through with that support. In five more minutes, I'm gonna read off the supporters, man, in a major way. Because, like I said, man, we gotta have conversations like this. We gotta talk about stuff that's important so that we can get people on code. It's all about prevention and solutions, not about celebrity gossiping. Listen. It's all about prevention and it's all about prevention and, and solutions. No celebrity gossiping. Now check game. It's nothing wrong with talking about what's going on in entertainment here and there. But when we're so focused on that to the point to where we ignore stuff, when we're so focused on that to the point to where we are ignoring stuff like this, that's when it becomes a problem because our priorities are screwed up. Too many grown men, too many grown men are concerned about what's going on in Cardi B's marriage. Too many black men are concerned about what's going on in Nicki Minaj's marriage to the point to where they won't even talk about stuff like this. Now, you tell me that ain't a problem for a grown ass man to be sitting around gossiping about Nicki Minaj's and Cardi B's marriage. But you won't talk about this. Shame on you niggas that's entertained by that bullshit. Shame on y'all. I'm not even talking about the content creators. Shame on you subscribers that's entertained by that nonsense. You gonna listen to a grown man gossip about Cardi B's marriage? <laughs> and they do this shit every day. It's not like he touches on it sometime. No, you listen to grown ass men gossip about shit like that every day. Nicki Minaj's marriage, Cardi B's marriage. And you and, and you niggas are entertained by that. Man, Lord Jesus Christ, man. I see why black, I see why black folks are in the shape that we in. We got niggas that's more concerned with dumb shit. That's the problem. <laughs> you gonna talk about Nicki Minaj's marriage? Oh my god, man. What is wrong with you niggas? This type of outrageous activity <laughs> and our outrageous incidents will not be tolerated. Okay. And so here oh, we are God. standing on the verge of history. You're here today for no lightweight reason. You're here today because never in the history never. of the United States of America and in this state have you had six police officers <laughs> plead guilty and be headed to court for sentencing at the same time that has never happened in the united states of america <laughs> that's never happened never in the in the history of mississippi <laughs> has a white law enforcement officer oh, shit, man. ever been ever 
been held criminally accountable for harming a black person <laughs> ever. And a lot of harm has occurred decade after decade in this state. So I must thank before tomorrow, I want to thank the United States Department of Justice Civil Rights Division under the leadership of this African-American woman named Miss Kristen Clark. I hope Miss Kristen Clark is listening. I spoke to her. We spoke to her. Let me give a shout out to these supporters, man, because they need a shout out, man. You know, shout out to my real FBA supporters. Shout out to UGK for the two. Shout out to uh, LK Phil for the 20. LK Phil hit us with a 20. Shout out to shout out to my girl Stacy for the 20. We got some more supporters, man. The FBA came through with heavy support, man, because guess what? This is what we do. We have real conversations. We talk about what's really important. Shout out to S-Gun for the five. S-Gun hit us with a five. Shout out to Moses Porter for the three. Shout out to my man, uh... Shout out to my man, Yellow Man, for the 30. Yellow Man hit us with a 30. I appreciate you, Yellow Man, for the 30. You heard me? Um, We got some old people, too, man. Uh, hit the like button. Share the content. Shout out to... uh, Let's get some more. Shout out to Alonzo for the 25. Alonzo Crosby hit us with a 25. Shout out to Freaky Fred for the 25. Shout out to my man, Latif, for the 5. Shout out to Lockertron for the 5. Shout out to Eric Hill. My man Eric, my man uh Eric hit us with a 50. Shout out to Eric for the 50. Shout out to my girl Trinity for the 15. Now we got some more supporters, man, because this is very important. Hit the like button and support the show. Black people wake up, man. Give celebrity gossip a break for a month. Matter of fact, yeah, that should have break for life and tune in from time to time to see what's going on but don't sit up here and be consumed with celebrity gossip so i know you got to start somewhere so i'm not gonna put that big i'm not gonna make it so big i'm gonna tell you like this leave celebrity gossip alone for one month and then take baby steps maybe you'll start to focus on real shit. but let's start right here it starts right here so all of you celebrity gossip junkies stop watching celebrity gossip for one month and expand your mind expand your thinking and you're going to reflect on that and say, damn, man, we was really doing bullshit. Red was right. Leave that shit alone for one month. You're going to see everything that I've been talking about. Last week. One month. And we must thank Miss Kristen Clark. And we must thank the Southern District staff of the United States Attorney's Office for vigorously standing up for justice in this state <laughs> of Mississippi and for obtaining these pleas and now we are expecting vigorous arguments by the prosecution tomorrow vigorous arguments for aggressive sentencing by the government tomorrow and so uh that's my opening we're here for justice we've gotten some justice we expect more justice uh eddie and michael have been through a lot and we'll move i'm going to move the program here but I must say that all of this, <laughs> every criminal act, every act of lawlessness that has occurred, it belongs to the responsibility ultimately. Shout out to my man, Big J. Shout out to uh, shout out shout out to JG. Shout out to JG for the two. I appreciate you, JG, for the deuce. You already know. Of Sheriff Brian Bailey in Rankin oh, County. Who? Who is that? Who is that? I hear Mr. Kareem Muhammad from the local organizing committee of Mississippi, who's manned all of the demonstrations on the front line. Brother Muhammad, honor you, Brother Kareem Muhammad. Okay, so ultimately, the responsibility for these acts of lawlessness which the Mississippi Today and other reporters has come out all over the country, that this goon squad has been operating or without supervision, without checks and balances, without being properly monitored and supervised by Sheriff Brian Bailey and Rankin County. So I'm praying that Rankin County is playing, paying close attention to what is happening because the world is watching and they want to know, do do you get the message, Rankin County? 
And do you get the message, Brian Bailey? And do you accept responsibility for the lives? You know what I'm going to do? We're going to break this down in two parts. What I'm going to do is around 2 o'clock, maybe like 2 p.m., I don't know, but sometime today, I'll schedule it. We're going to talk about the Haitian invasion. We're going to talk about the Venezuelan gangs. And we're going to talk about this all in one. And I will take calls. Oh, yeah, I will take calls. We'll take calls for that show. But right now, I wanted to get straight to the point, And then, yeah, we'll, we'll bring you guys up to see what y'all got to say uh, for round two. But it, it don't matter if you can talk about what's going on in Haiti, this situation, the Venezuelan thing. We're going to have it. We're going to we're going to have it all in one show. Instead of me just separating them, we'll just have a call in show and talk about all of these subjects, these current events that you have allowed to be tortured and others have gone to their grave like Damien Cameron, who we also represent. And, and the world wants to know, does Rankin County and the, uh, Mississippi- Yeah, I, I do call-ins all the time. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do a call-in show to this one, but it's gonna be a three-in-one show. We're gonna talk about this, other current events, and we're gonna talk about the Haitian uh, invasion, what's going on in Haiti. We're going to talk about the uh, the fact that we have open borders. Now we got Venezuelan gangs. So we're going to lump all of these conversations in one show and I will take calls. I might speak for 30, 40 minutes. Then right after that, we'll take calls. I'll schedule that show today. Tap in with us, family. FBA show up. Stand up and show up. And, and their support of their sheriff, Brian Bailey, are they as in the same mindset of doing justice. The world wants to know. I'll let you hear from the Honorable Trent Walker here now as we move forward. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I, I will do my best not to be long or repetitive, uh, but the point that we yeah, want to- I agree with you, brother, and I, and, I, and I put it on the screen because it makes perfect sense. Shout out to Maurice. He said, it's sad we got to go to the devil to ask him to convict their own for harming and killing us. Man, I got to repeat that. That was so deep. Shout out to Maurice for putting that on the screen. I got to repeat it because it's deep. It's sad that we got to go to the devil to ask him to convict their own people for harming and killing us, right? We got to go to the white man and beg them to convict their own people for harming and killing us. Now, that's something to think about. Shout out to Maurice. That's a fact, brother get across today is that uh yeah. that the day of justice has come the week of justice yeah. has come yeah. and uh it has been a very uh busy last year we've accomplished some things uh i don't believe that ever have you had a case go from uh january 24th when uh the crimes occurred to uh people pleading without ever having been indicted uh, in August. So the Department of Justice has certainly moved with diligence and with lightning speed. We do appreciate that. Uh, but what we wanna keep on everybody's mind is that Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, who does not like the limelight, but these two men are the reason that we are here. And what would be justice for them is for Judge Tom Lee, who I know and respect and have always found to be a fair judge, but for Judge Tom Lee to uh, sentence these six members of the goon squad, and these, in my opinion, are just the six that, that were available to come terrorize that night. That's right. That's the truth. But for those six members of the goon squad to receive the maximum sentences and if at all possible, we would like for those sentences to run consecutively Ooh. so that uh, right. it can be a word to others in law enforcement that you treat people with respect and you treat people with service. Almost every police car. In and pay attention to what he said. Those are the ones who got caught. Those are the ones who were available that night to commit that crime on those civilians. And on top of that, those were the ones who got caught. Don't for one second think you don't have a whole police force or a whole sheriff department full of people who think and operate like this. These are not lone wolves. Don't for one second think that these guys are just lone wolves. 
It's a lot of people in that county with the same mentality. You got officers and sheriff deputies across the country with this same mentality. Guess what? Out here, you know, out here in Cali, we had a gang in the sheriff department called the executioners and they would target black people. I repeat, in California, Los Angeles to be exact, L.A. County, they had a, a group of sheriff deputies that created their own gang and, and they were called the executioners. And what would they do? They would target black people specifically. So this is going on across the country, not just in Mississippi. America has the words to protect and serve. Yeah. Yes. But you can't protect one segment of the community and then uh, persecute another set segment of the community. If you're gonna protect and serve, then everybody deserves the same protection and the same service. You know, if two men are minding their business in a private residence, this is not Russia. And the Rankin County uh, goon squad is not the Gestapo. You don't have the right to rush into somebody's private residence where they are minding their business, committing no crime and terrorize and brutalize and commit acts of deviancy because you don't like the fact that they're in the neighborhood. Yeah, and, and, I, and, and I say these things, I've been saying this, man. I did videos about the executioners in Los Angeles, how they specific, how they target black specifically in Los Angeles County. It's a gang within the sheriff department in Los Angeles County. It's going on across the country. I don't know why you people are so surprised to see this when I've been telling y'all about how crooked the deputies, the police are. You guys think systematic racism died off? How stupid you got to be? I'm just saying. And we want this sentence tomorrow to reflect what is expected because police brutality is still occurring. We all know what came to light this past week. Uh, also in Rankin County, just with a different department, we know what came to light in terms of the way that that particular officer uh, handled somebody that was in his custody. So acts of brutality are continuing to occur. And we want we are here because we want the justice system to understand that what we expect is not one system of justice for lay people who are uh, apprehended by the police and taken into custody and another justice system when the officers themselves are the criminals. We want the officers treated with the same uh, air of criminality that they would have if they never put a badge on. Exactly, you gotta give them the same smoke, right? He's telling the truth. Hit the like button and support the show. This is not, isol this is not just isolated to Mississippi. It's going on across the country. Wake up and smell what's going on, people. I know you niggas are too. I know you guys are too busy being entertained by celebrity gossip, stupid shit like that. Pay attention to something that's real for once in your life. Let me, let me, let me give you guys. Uh, I challenge you guys, right? I challenge you guys to stop paying attention to celebrity gossip for a month, and I guarantee you, within that one month, you will see everything I've been saying about how brainwashed black people are, grown as men using their platforms to gossip about Cardi B's marriage. What a damn shame! Grown ass men talking about Nicki Minaj's marriage, Cardi B's marriage, while ignoring stuff like this. And shame on you niggas that shame on you niggas that's entertained by them goofy niggas. Why the fuck do I care about what's going on with Cardi B's marriage when we got more important things going on in the country? What's wrong with you niggas? What's wrong with you niggas who's entertained by that goofy shit? And with that. I will yield the floor, but I do thank you all for coming. Let's give, brother, let's give Mr. <laughs> Attorney Trent Walker a hand. And Walker a hand. Let's, 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 let's look into the information. <laughs> then I want you to hear from Michael and Eddie and a few others. And we take your questions. Let's look at the information here. The racial, the racial taunting. This is the information that the defendants pled to. Page five. <laughs> The defendants grabbed Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, who were still handcuffed. And this, I'm going to say this to you, brothers, man, and I want you guys to listen up. Look at all these black men with 100,000 followers, 100, 200,000 subscribers, and pay close attention to what they're talking about every day. 
female nature, female nature, Nicki Minaj, Megan Thee Stallion. Russell was Russell Wilson's marriage with Sierra. Pay attention to what these niggas are talking about. That's what they're using their platforms for. You got grown ass men using their platforms to gossip about celebrities, celebrity marriages and shit. What are you niggas doing with your platforms? What are you niggas doing with your influence besides gossiping about females in their marriage? If that ain't some weak ass shit, I don't know what is. And the sad part about it is you got tons of weak ass black men who show up to listen to that goofy shit when they go live about it. Russell Wilson's marriage with Sierra. So, uh, uh, Cardi B's marriage and offset. You got time to listen to that goofy shit as a grown man when we got big problems going on in this country. Shame on you niggas that's entertained by that bullshit, man. That's why these niggas continue to feed you that. That's why they'll continue to feed you that garbage because they know you're entertained by it. Why would they give you something real when they know you're entertained by stupid shit? Well, they'll just continue to give you stupid shit. And brought them in the living room. The defendants, <laughs> all of whom are white, called <laughs> MJ and Jesus. EP, Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, racial slurs, including nigger, monkey, and boy, and accused them of taking advantage of a white woman who owned the house and warned them to stay out of Rankin County and go back to Jackson or their side of the Pearl River, their area with higher concentrations of black residents. This is not Jenkins and Parker talking. This is what they admitted to and pled to. Um, and so Hunter Elwood, is, if, if these sentences <laughs> for these crimes pled to are given out consecutively, meaning one after another, mm -hmm. Hunter Elwood will receive 70 years for what he has done to Michael Jenkins and Eddie Park. Christian Detman, who is another ringleader here, he's a ringleader. He's facing 70 years in jail uh, if he receives the maximum sentence and he has signed papers acknowledging that he recognizes that he could receive the maximum sentence all of the other defendants could receive up to uh, listen man let me tell you something man and it's just for you guys to be focused on what's real i don't care how many subscribers any of these niggas got none of these niggas is realer than me and i don't just do this shit on youtube my nigga i get out there in real life and and, and rub shoulders with the people and we figure and we come and we try to figure out what could be done about stuff like this i don't give a damn how many subscribers these niggas got none of them are really than red supreme not one of them not one of them my, these niggas get subscribers to talk about celebrity gossip none of these niggas are real none of them all of them are food gazy look at what they use their platforms for i just told you not one of these niggas is really than red supreme I don't care how many subscribers they got. None of that shit matters. When it comes to realness, they ain't got it. They ain't got a deposit. They don't have a deposit of it in them. Not one, not a deposit of realness in them. So you can't get a withdrawal because they've never made a deposit of realness within them. Grown ass men gossiping about Nicki Minaj's marriage. What's wrong with you niggas for listening to that? 60 years. Now the rules for the state of Mississippi and the criminal system do not allow us to see the, the sentencing uh, uh, back and forth between the, uh, the defendants and the prosecution and their efforts. So we're still waiting as well tomorrow to see exactly what will happen in court. But our understanding is from attorney Trent Walker and other criminal practitioners in this state is that the United States Attorney's Office in this state <laughs> often and seek very close to the maximum penalty for the crimes. And so we're expecting, we're advocating for expecting consecutive sentences and real time. Okay. And so we want you to hear, you'll hear from him today briefly. These, these gentlemen have been through a lot of trauma. I want you to understand this. <laughs> Michael and Ed, they've been through a lot of trauma. They did not ask to be on the front page of newspapers and under this kind of stress and spotlight. They were just minding their own business. 
and they're having uh, uh, difficult. They're having, uh, as any of us would, issues being constantly under the spotlight at all times. So I would like you to bear with them. Eddie will be testifying this week. I don't think Michael will have much to say this week in court, but he will be there front and center. But this is traumatizing for these gentlemen. Yes, it is. I'll touch on that today, my brother. I'll touch on that in my second show. I told you I got a second show where we're going to be talking about the Venezuelan gang because I got to do it over. The other one had too much profanity. YouTube was like, clean it up, my brother. So I said, I'll take it down and I'll redo it, but I'll make it 10 times better. But we're going to include this. We're going to include what's going on in Haiti. Uh, we're going to talk about the Venezuelan gangs and, yeah, what's going on in Chicago, New York with this migrant crisis. So that will be the second show. And I will take calls. I'll speak for like 30, 40 minutes. And for the rest of the show, we'll take calls to get you guys involved in it. Real spit. But I want you to hear from Brother Eddie, Mr. Eddie Parker. Or whatever he can say. Um, uh, I don't know. It's been, it been, it been a long time. It's been a time uh, year, man. I, I don't know. It's uh, a lot of stuff I can say. I got nine, 19 uh, microphones right in front of me. Man. I got a lot I can say, man. A lot I can't, can't say, but I mean. Now, this brother right here, this brother right here was one of the victims. And he said that he forgive the white man for torturing him. And I don't know why. They hate you because of your black skin. But you're going to forgive them for their negative actions, man. Everything moving, you know, a whole lot quicker, but a whole lot smoother you know, than we thought. I mean, I'm, uh, I appreciate the justice system, man. I appreciate all the higher ups that, you know, that uh, that gave a ear, you know, to what I was saying, what we were saying, what we went through. I mean, it was a, uh, it, it's been a, a, a harder year, just as much as it was, you know, harder going through that, you know, situation. Now, I don't think it was longer, you know, but I mean, time, you know, time seemed to slow down and they had sped, sped back up. It's, uh, it's good that everything moving, you know, the way it is. And I, I'm just hoping that everything that, you know, comes out of it, comes out of it, as, you know, being the right thing because everything needs to be done right because everything was done wrong. And we just want right out of it. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> I mean, what's, uh, what's, what's done uh, already, man, can't be erased, man, can't be taken back. Uh, I relay this every day. I relay this, uh, mm -hmm. you know, every time I, I, you know, turn on the TV, every time I, you know, get on my phone, I'm on. Social media, I mean, I'm seeing it. Everybody telling my story, everybody telling my story. It's a, uh, I mean, it's a, it's been a roller coaster, man. I'm still riding. You know, I mean, either I like three parts, or you know what I'm saying? I just like riding roller coasters. <laughs> but I, it's something I gotta ride, that's something I gotta do. I appreciate y'all for being out here for, uh, with us, man, taking care of, you know, all all that get, you know, put out over the world, man. I mean, over the world, y'all trust and know, man. Hey, we still living, man. We appreciate that, man. Appreciate the love, man. I'll keep on fighting for us, man. We're going to keep fighting for y'all. We don't know y'all. We're going to fight for y'all. Okay. okay, again, Brother Michaels, uh, he's been through a lot. He's not going to say a lot. I think he may have a word here. And uh, I'm sensitive. And these are uh, both of the victims, the brother with the bald head and the other brother with the baseball cap. These are the two victims. Now, the brother with the baseball cap said he forgives them for what they did to him. I don't know why. You sound like you fresh off of the Rosewood Plantation talking about we shall overcome and shit. And it's 2024. Let's go. Tip to him at this time. This is a lot for him. He, he, he's not used to all of this. But go ahead, Mr. Michael Jenkins. <clears throat> I'd like to thank everybody for supporting us and believing in us. And, um, it's been very hard for me for us this past year. Um, just looking forward to justice in my Hope that's they right. do right. That's right. That's right. They're going to get it. Hope for the best and, and, and prepare for the worst. Thank you. Come on, Mike. Right. Come on, Mike. Let's get this back. Bring this back. Okay, I want you to hear from Michael's <laughs> mom, Miss Mary. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because that's right. Uh, if you want to understand what kind of, and she'll be testifying this week also at the sentence in here. If you want to understand what kind of stress and trauma that this can put on a family, then I want you to hear it from Michael's mother. And also, I must say that we are the, the we are in the middle of a civil of the civil suit 
<laughs> in federal court for Michael and Eddie. We can talk about that if you'll ask about it. And we're in the middle of that and fighting that, and we can update you on that. But what I want you to do now is, um, well, let me bring Michael's mom, then Miss English. Just hold Miss English, we're gonna get you in. I want you to bring Miss, let's give her a strongest round of applause. That's right, for standing up under all of this, day and night, the Honorable Miss Mary Jenkins, mother of Michael Jenkins. Well, I'm glad you're all right here today. Mic, I, um, I don't really have much to say. When I first found out that my son was shot and that he was shot in the mouth, I was almost certain that he was dead. I called Rankin County and at first they wouldn't let me speak with him. I'm tired of hearing this, man. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Come on, man. This ain't the Rosewood Plantation back in the 1800s. Talking about I forgive myself. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Nigga, humming and singing. This ain't the slave plantation. It's 2024. Stand up for your rights, fool. Talking about you forgive massa. They said they were in a meeting. And when I finally spoke with someone, I asked him if my son was alive. And he said, as far as I know. It's 2024. Niggas still marching, talking about we shall overcome. Like it's the Rosewood Slave Plantation. Huh? Talking about you forgive the master for what he done did to you. I said, well, when can I see him? He said, when we let you see him. This is a crying mother on the phone trying to we... inquire about her son. He said, Michael is our property. That's what that deputy told me on the phone. My son shot in the mouth, and he's telling me that Michael is their property. Now, listen, you guys, man, we're going to wrap this one up, man. We've been speaking for an hour and 30 minutes. I got a second show coming up, and I will open up the phone lines. I'm going to talk for 40 minutes, maybe 30. And the rest of the show, we're going to take calls. I want you guys to get involved. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Now. Uh, hit the like button to support the show. I appreciate everybody for showing love uh, for this content. It was beautiful, man. You know, we gonna we, we, we uh, you guys pulled up and did your thing. Shout out to John J for the five. Shout out to uh, Denzel Flosserton for the four. Shout out, shout out to Akatun Day for the five. Shout out to Blissful Beauty for the five. You know what? I appreciate you, baby. Mm hmm. Yeah. True story. Anyway, man, we're going to get up out of here. Peace, love, and blessings. Giving you gain to keep you from stressing is Red Supreme. I'll be back with a second show. I think you guys already know. And make sure, hey, you guys, make sure that you share this content because it's very important. More people need to hear this. This information and knowledge needs to spread so that we can get ahead. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Like it's the Rosewood Slave Plantation. It's 2024. Talking about we shall overcome. Marching and humming and shit. Anyway. <laughs> I'll be back with a second show. Black people, we got to do better. Share the information. Share the content. We'll be back with some more real. You already know. It is time to go. Peace.